give it a go. That is ideal. That is exactly how you would take off if you're tandeming with somebody in a cult or something. Well, hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Zero to 60. We are here with Brock. Hello again. Because we have an update. So we released the clutch fill emulators a couple of weeks ago and we've decided to make it better. Well, we haven't decided. We've worked out a way to make them a bit better. And of course, Brock has now got an 8 HP in his lovely drift cars. He needs to get that sorted. It's just not a drift car, is it? This is a street car. It's a street car. That can be taken to drift events. Street. Let's let Brock explain what's changed with version two of the clutch fill emulators. So I've made them more universal so that we can easily put them on a multitude, a multitude of different things. And um, you could also do it if you have something weird that you want to put on that we don't support currently, you can purchase just this part and adapt that to any firewall mount you like. This is the Nissan SNR chassis firewall mount. And this is just the emulator. And inside, it's quite difficult to get apart, but this comes out. And then inside it... You've made that seal a little bit too well, I think. Yeah, I can't get it out at the moment. <laughs> but there's a spring and a JZ valve bucket here so that when you push on your clutch pedal, it pushes on the push rod and pushes on that. And that gives you the resistance to make it feel like a clutch is still in there somewhere. Okay, so the big thing that you've really changed is the thing that pushes on the spring. So yeah. before we had, I think it was like an eight mil. Uh, six or eight mil, basically just a disc with the profile in it for the end of the push rod. Um, and we did that on Brent's car. And what we found is after a while it wore a little bit and it would go, it would just T uh, twist a little bit yep. and jam up in the bore. So with the JZ valve bucket in here, um, it's quite a bit longer. It's probably 15 mil long, so it can't go sideways and jam up in the bore. Okay. Well, it's not that it was jamming, but it just, we actually took it apart to inspect Brent's and you can just see it's not... Yeah, there's some galling in there from, from it not acting smoothly. So, so this, this should be super smooth. Yes. Um, okay. And oh, the other thing, you've changed the uh like the pivot ratio yeah so for a couple of reasons first of all to make it feel stiffer second of all to make this unit shorter we've had the spring throw less yes the pedal to throw less so it will require that on a nissan at least we know anyway on a nissan you'll have to drill a new hole in your clutch pedal just above where the factory one is okay okay all right so i just wanted to film that before it goes in your car and then we don't see it again for a little while guys you'll see us shortly when brock's got it working in this thing yeah that's you got the it feels like a proper clutch yeah i can push it in and out and while still loading it up perfect yeah actual clutch yeah. times we want the riding so you could probably make those baseline figures that you just played with before better again. Yeah. I don't know. That's got to be pretty good. Yeah. It's really good. Let's try it again. Oh, for those listening at home, this is some um, clutch take-up tuning. So when we're drifting and we want to get a line really quick because the start of a drift is really a drag race when you're, when you're in a battle. I get, so, it's basically high load clutch slip. That's right. And getting that right to feel really good like a manual. Um, anyway, we're in second. We'll give it a go. That is ideal. That is exactly how you would take off if you're tandeming with somebody in a comp or something. Right. You're trying to keep it off the line. Will it do it in third? Yeah, we'll give it a crack in third. Because I know third uses different clutches, so I just want to make sure that this calibration is going to work for a right. few different gears. <laughs> to get to third, we're going to roll forward a little bit first and then gauge third. third. Okay. Right, let's try third. Yeah, that's a little bit different feel to make it work if you're not used to taking off a third, but it's pretty good. All right. That one there is a perfect example of the clutches reloading up again. Yeah, yeah. So that was third. But yeah, as it bogged, clutch in again, a bit yeah. more throttle, let it out again to speed up. It was higher yeah. where it started. Yeah, that's so sweet. I think the next step is when we're at the track next, we'll drive and fiddle it maybe yeah. a little bit and do a little bit more fine tuning. But yeah, we just need to keep giving feedback and then doing bits like this, spending yeah. another hour, and yeah. eventually it'll be perfect. 
Sweet. Nice. Oh, yeah. Marker. Automatic drift cars. Wow. That's just <laughs> Rock's now going to demonstrate how to actually configure it in the Turbo Lamic. So this is something that's taken us a little while to be confident to share with you guys. There's quite a lot of settings and we're in Daniel's E46 now and although we were quite happy with this and everyone that drove it said it just felt like a clutch, Brock, being what? the perfectionist fabricator that he is, it could be better. you weren't happy with this with your setup and that's, that's yeah. how we've come to this way of setting these things up. So I'm going to let Brock explain how he made his car feel kind of incredible. All right, so what are we gonna do first? Actually, I, I know what we're gonna do first. You must get 10.71 firmware loaded and get the car adapted. And just make sure that you have got adaptation values in there. They're always gonna change a little bit, but trying to tune the clutch before you do adaptations does not end well. It's a fruitless effort. Yes, yeah, you basically just get early clutch slip. Um, the other thing that we noticed on Brock's car, we don't know if it's gonna be a concurring issue, but the first gear start algorithm that's new to 10.71 in fact I'll show you guys here okay so under transmission calibration then gear start this new option here which is close clutch in neutral so this is a different algorithm for basically take up so it locks a and b clutches and then uses the third clutch uh, to do the take up we found on Brock's car when that was enabled you'd blow through the clutch wouldn't yeah, you? yeah we'd slip the clutch on trying to trying to drag race off the line with the clutch, you'd slip that clutch. Yes. So we just uh, disabled that and went and to, it, it works in the old style where it would use all three clutches to take off. Yes. And then it holds my 600 horsepower. Yeah, well, just going on to that, that feature is designed to get the car in drive and in reverse faster. And when you've got it enabled, it selects drive and reverse quicker, like an OEM car. We're talking fractions of a second here, but it, it is noticeable. The problem with it is Brock's car would take up okay, but when he was finally off the clutch pedal and the power started to feed in around three, 4,000 RPM, it would then push through that single clutch. Now that is something that may have learnt around, but the way that we've set up all the drift cars from this point on is turn that feature off. And these are drift cars. It doesn't matter if it takes an extra hundredth of a second to get it into park or reverse. So even when I'm street driving it, it's not a going from neutral to drive and reverse isn't, isn't slow by any means. I, if somebody said to me, do you want it faster? I wouldn't say, oh yeah, I need it faster. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's a thing for OEM stuff, which yeah. is sweet, but if you've got a sports car, I think this, what we're doing is Gotta be worth fun. the sacrifice. Okay, so what's the process to calibrate the clutch sensor? Obviously, if you buy the clutch emulator kit from us, uh, we provide the Haltech linear potentiometer. That is the first thing you need to calibrate. Yep, so basically what you do is you install it on your clutch pedal, on the lever, on something so it can in and out as it does, and then, in the Lamex software, you go to the setting, which Andrew will show you here. And it is, you go to sensor calibration, sensor input. So you wanna make sure that the clutch sensor is selected properly. The default input is number two on the Lamex. So that is correct. First setting you wanna work on is clutch sensor calibration, that one there. And it comes up with a percentage and a volt rating. And to set that, you basically want to go into your dashboards. No, sorry. You want to go into lists down the bottom here. And then we want to go analog input, which was not already selected. We know that the clutch sensor is on input, is on analog input two. And we've got Brock here playing with the setting. And what we're going to do is basically, you find the zero point. Have it all the way out. And this one is set up so that zero volts reads 0%, but we wanna have a little bit of leeway. So you can see here, this is so if you've got your foot leaning on the clutch or you're drifting or anything, so the pedal's moving a fraction, you don't activate the clutch. So we've got basically a leeway of 0.9 volts. And when you start to put your foot on the clutch, how much is the pedal moving before we get a reading? Um, we've probably got about five millimeters on the, on the foot just by feel. Okay, so we've got five, five millimeters of safety, I guess, not to activate the clutch in the gearbox accidentally, which is kind of like a normal clutch. All clutch yeah. pedals have a little bit of a dead pedal point. Well, the mechanical design of a regular clutch is that the first bit doesn't do anything anyway. Of course. Okay, so you've got it. set up properly, that is. Some of them are <laughs> set up properly. Yeah, so do make sure you put that in. And the same goes when you're at the full pedal length. So you don't want it to be, you don't want this value here to be when, the, when your pedal is hard on the floor. So we're hard on the floor now, that's 100% clutch. Okay, so 100% is, you can see here, hard on the floor is 4.8 volts, but we're activating 100% clutch at four volts there. So the takeaway, just make sure you've got a bit of leeway on each end of the pedal. 
and that is it's kind of crucial to make sure you do that and that's also so that if you do if you're drifting again and you don't get it hard on the carpet you've got a bit of safety so that you know that the clutches will be fully disengaged yeah okay so once you've got your limits set up what's next bro uh then we'll do the clutch the clutch engagement tuning mm -hmm. you want to call it that Something i think like that sounds very professional oh, done that. we'll do that next okay so what's the process we need to so the way we've done it and it could be I suppose you could do it a couple of different ways, but what we've found is we push the clutch in, so we go to the table with the clutch engagement tuning. I can't remember what the table's called. Is that the clutch closing time um, or pressure? pressure? Calibration, that one. Okay. This is our um, pressure calibration. This is basically these values here indicate where how much pressure is going to the clutches um, when you when you're trying to move forward. So what we did is go back to our dashboard so we can see our clutch pressures. Dashboard, and then we go clutch pressures. And here, we then we I push the clutch in. We go into um, second gear, second two manual we're in, and then we just let the clutch out a little bit, and we just see where whereabouts the pressures are at as it starts to give us a bit of four wheel drive. So there we go. So that's these pressures along the top. Yeah. So that. So I get a bit of drive at around 65. Okay, that was probably really hard for you guys to see, but basically as the pedal's coming up, ignoring the clutch value here, but as the pedal's coming up, the car starts to move when the clutch values are around 60 to 65. Yeah, so based on that, and because we want the clutch to ramp in as you let it out, like a normal clutch does, we will start at our uh, pressure calibration at percentage here and we'll go to around um, where we around the 60% so it's six. We'll, sit, we'll set that at around um, let's set that at 60 60 now do we need to change the values we do. to the left so let's we'll taper them down by because the clutch takes up fairly quickly so go um, I'll go 10 off each one yeah, 10 off each one so 40 and then 30. So now it reads 30, 40, 50, 60. And then obviously 250 is our um, is our maximum. That's full clutch pressure. Yep. Um, so we want that at the end, but we don't want it all the way up there. So let's we'll, we'll ramp up from our uh, our 60. I can't see that screen from here. Oh, sorry, dude. My old eyes. <laughs> um, so let's go. Well, let's leave it at that and see how that feels. Okay. It looks like it ramps in pretty good. All right, I'm going to save those values and we're going to upload it to the TCU. That's uploaded. See how that feels. That's pretty soft. Let me just um, I'll try and drag race it a little bit. We need to make it ramp in a little bit softer. A little bit softer, so we're still getting too much of a thud. Yeah. All right, clutch sensor, cal oh no, we want clutch pressure calibration. So we want... So from our 60. We're changing, basically drop them all down by 10? Oh, on the right side. Oh, on the right side. So if we go, change it to 75. 75. And then let's go 90. Oh, is that 90 now? That's let's 90, yep. 90. And then let's go... Um, 110 on that one. 110. Then, oh, 110. And then go 150. And, and then let's go 250 on that one. So the reason for changing that is basically move the full bike point further into the pedal movement. That's right, yeah. Okay. So that, like a regular mechanical clutch, your clutch is fully engaged before your foot's all the way off the pedal. Okay, well, that's uploaded to the LAMIC. We'll try it again. That's good. That was it. Perfect, that's it. It's like he's done that before. Okay, so one thing I'll just say, just to clarify that, it, there's two main steps of this process that we're doing. You've got to set the values that the sensor feed to the LAMIC and then what the LAMIC needs to interpret those sensors, which is the voltage setting, that's the clutch sensor calibration, 
in the LAMIC settings, and then we tune the clutch sensor pressure calibration. And that's the one that really makes them feel good. And that's that one there. And the point of this is you wanna basically find out where the car starts to move when you first start to move, or when you first start to let your foot off the clutch, when you get your first bite point, and then you use that value. To us, it was 60. At around the 60% mark, that's where you start it, and then you taper it off, and that'll give you a, the feeling of the bite point. And then all of the work is sort of happening from the 60 percentage onwards. That's the way that we find these things work the best. And again, make sure you bring in the full clutch pressure earlier in this pressure calculation or calibration, I should say, so that, yeah, when you're at the 10% mark, you've still got, you've got full, full clutch, full clutch engagement. Yeah. I hope that makes sense. Any comments, sorry, any questions, leave them in the uh, the comments below. Brock is personally gonna answer all of the comments on this one. He's very proud really of his settings. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's what we've done. And uh, anyone that's bought the clutch emulators from us, we will obviously walk you through this and help you do it. But anyone that's doing it themselves, hopefully this is enough of a guide for you. Thank you all for watching. Thanks for working it out, Brock. Before we go, oh. if you pause the video at the end, We'll post up what we've done in my car, in this car, and in Brent's car to give people an idea on that on that pressure calculation, so they can see the way it ramps in. Absolutely. All right, I've got all that data as well. Yep. Sweet. Cheers, guys. Bye.